Welcome to our English class. Today, we'll be looking at a very vital topic. Um, that's, that's part of speech that is more, or rather should I say the most important, though we are meant to understand that all parts of speech are important, but let me use the word, that part of speech that it's more elaborate than others, that part of speech that makes sentence, make meaning, all right? And that's verbs. Now, you will agree with me that verbs are actually much, yes. The much um, topics we have, subtopics under verbs are what we can't actually exhaust in a particular day. So, I would like us to look at the regular and the irregular verbs. All right, so we're looking at regular and irregular verbs. At some point in one of my teachings, we treated the finite and non-finite verbs, and we cleared the fact that finite verbs are verbs that show tense, Why non-finite verbs do not show tense. And any verb that you have in a sentence which isn't showing tense is non-finite, and at such can function either as a noun or an adjective. So today we want to look at regular and irregular verbs. I believe that by the names you would to an extent know where we are delving into. Now when we talk about regular verbs, regular verbs are verbs that by its name regular the change or the changes are not much or isn't much. Why irregular verbs are verbs that obviously are not steady they keep changing at every given opportunity. This is just a peripheral definition. So to have a holistic knowledge on regular and irregular verbs, we have split our learning objectives into four, and that is we'll have to define regular verbs and state rules in forming them. Number three, we'll have to define irregular verbs and state the different forms of irregular verbs with their examples. All right, so this is this just it, verbs, and we are saying that verbs are regular, some verbs are irregular. All right, this is one key thing we have to know, more or less looking at the differences between the regular verbs and irregular verbs. We'll look at the difference, or rather the differences in three ways. One is the meaning, two is the formation, then the examples that would clarify what we are talking about. Now, for regular verbs, we say that regular verbs are verbs with usual symbol past and past participle. Regular verbs have simple past and past participle, all right? It's usual. It's not what you bother yourself to identify. While irregular verbs refer, rather, sorry, irregular verbs refer to the verbs which have same or different present, past, and past participle forms. Then under formation, we say that in forming regular verbs, we have standard rules. But in forming irregular verbs, we have special rules. We have standard rules while forming regular verbs. But in the formation of irregular verbs, we have special rules in forming them. Now these are few examples of regular verbs and irregular verbs, varying examples. Now for regular verbs, we have um, pin, which forms its past by adding another N, then ED, because it's a consonant. We'll get to that when we're looking at the rules of forming the regular verbs, past and past participle. Then we have another regular verb example, which has the consonant Y ending the word, but at the point of forming the past and past participle, we change the Y to I, then add our ED. Then we have another regular verb, die, which ends with a vowel letter E. We only add D. So what does it basically tell us? It tells us that in forming our regular verbs, we add the suffix, predefined suffix, D or ED. D or ED. We are not adding I. You can't say we are adding IED because we only change the Y to, to I. So the two letters you add to your 
regular verbs to form the past and past participle are e and d. These are extra letters added to the original word to form the past and past participle. No wonder when we were looking at suffixes, we said that suffixes are word elements added to a root word to change either the word class or the tense. All right? So that's that. So for irregular verbs, you can see we have four ways of forming irregular verbs. Unlike the regular verb, where we have the addition of two letters or one letter, the irregular verbs we don't add will rather have four varying forms. One, same, present, and the past participle. Sameness in present and past participle. Then we have sameness in past and past participle. We have entirely different words for both present, past, and past participle. And finally, we have where the present, the past, and past participle are the same. I guess we have gotten a little of where we are going to. So let's go to the topic proper. Now, what are regular verbs? What are regular verbs? Aside the peripheral definition I gave when we started, what are regular verbs? Regular verbs refer to the verbs that depend on the basic pattern of inflection. Inflection means the variation in the form of a word, usually in the end, to describe the tense. All right? We looked at this when we treated suffixes. Inflections are added to word elements to change the tense. All right? You could also add inflections to change the class, word class of a particular word. So the formation of tenses in regular verbs, particularly the past tense forms, that is simple past and past participle, is done, the formation is done by adding a predefined suffix. I said it earlier, you add a predefined suffix. You add D, you add ED, you add IED when there is a word that ends with Y. You just don't add IED. It is when you have a word that ends with Y, you have to change the Y to I because the pronunciation changes and as such affects the spelling. All right, so now this is an example, a chart on um, regular verbs. Now you see we have the word look and we have formed the past and past participle as looked by adding ed. So when you have a word that ends with a consonant that need not be doubled, you just add your ed. The same thing with kick, the same thing with talk. Should we now say that words that end with k, obviously you add your ed without doubling the word. All right, so other examples we have are there, but we couldn't uh, put up the, the past knowing that they are already regular verbs. So jumped, jumped. For past, jumped. For past participle, is also jumped. Remember, the past participle is like your perfect tense. That's it. Past participle is your perfect tense. Now we have cry. Now the example I gave about word ending with Y. So having cry, we will now have cried. We'll change the Y to I. So that means we're adding I, E, D. Hop, we are doubling the P, hopped. Skip, we are doubling the P, skipped. Play, played. Now we have a word that ends with Y, but we are not going to change this Y to I because of the pronunciation. The play is sounding as play and not I. In cry, it sounded as I sound, and that is why we had to change. But this is sounding as A sound, and it has the same as aid, played. So it's the ED that ought to be there. Then finally, we have walk, walked, listen, listened, listened. Yes, it ends with a consonant N, but we are not doubling it because the N is already there. It's not like pinned. This one is listened. You just add your ED. Now, how regular verbs are formed? Very important. How are regular verbs formed? When we know this, it will help us a long way. Now, when the action word ends with a vowel, D is added to convert it into past tense. When the action word 
ends with a vowel. Obviously, regular verbs are action words. Remember when we define verb, we say that verbs are action word or state of being words. So for the action word, when it ends with a vowel, we add D to convert it to past tense. Why? Remember at the start, we said that regular verbs are those verbs that are formed by adding the D or ED, the predefined D, prefix suffixes rather, which are D, E, D, I, E, D. So you either add D or you add ED or you add I, E, D. It will be out of place for you to add the three at the same time. You are adding either of these word letters or rather word elements to the root word by virtue of the word that you have as the root word. Right? So I have these examples, base form, that's the present tense. When we talk about base form, we talk about the present tense. Close, die, hate, seal, and create. So these are verb words. They are all action words that end with E. So basically, what do we do? We add D to form the simple past and the past participle. And that we have closed, died, hated, sued, created, pronounced as hated, not hated, hated, and created. All right, so that's that. Under the past participle, we have the same thing that we have for the simple past. Reason for saying that regular, regular verbs have standard way of forming their past and the past, but it is standard. It is not mixed. It is not special. Once it's stated how it's uh, uh, um, achieved, that's the way it's achieved, both for the simple past and the past participle. Now, which other way do we form our um, regular verbs? Regular verbs are formed when the action word ends with a consonant. If it ends with a consonant, add ed, all right, to change it to past and past participle. We are adding ed when it ends with a consonant. Remember, we saw certain um, verb words that end with e. We said once it ends with e, add D. But here, no, when it doesn't end with E, we are to add E, D, depending. All right, so we have dress, we have rip, we have roll, we have slam, and we have press. So these are verb words, and to form their past and the past participle, all what we need to do is to add the E, D. So we have actualized the past and the past participle of these base forms by adding ed where necessary obviously at the root at the end of the root word and you agree with me that it ha what it has done is that it has changed the tense of the base form dress rip roll slam are in a present form so adding ed changes it to past as well as past participle this is dressed this is ripped, this is rolled, this is slammed, and this is pressed. All right. Then we have, if the last letter of the word ends with Y, if the last letter of the word ends with Y, ID is added to change its form. All right. Add ID, IED to change its form. If the last letter of the word ends with Y, ID, IED, is added to change its form. Please pardon that mistake. So you have the word bury. Obviously, it ends with, these words end with Y. And as such, IED will be added in all of these words to form the past and the past participle. So we have buried, we have cried, we have tried, we have tried, and we have tried. Now let's move on to the irregular verbs. Now these aspect of verb um, is actually a bit difficult for students when to identify which should be used and which should not be used. Now in irregular verbs we have no business with adding the suffix D, the predefined suffix D or ED or IED. We have no such business. As a matter of fact we referred to the irregular verbs as 
um, special in their formation. They are actually special in their formation because we have about four of them and they are formed differently. So we have to pay attention to understand this. So an irregular verb is a type of strong verb which has some special rules for creating past tense forms. So these verbs do not end with D or ED or IED. Rather, they change their forms completely in a sentence that the irregular verbs are transformed into an entirely different word. All right? They do not have consistent fixed endings. Regular verbs have consistent fixed endings. Oh, it's a regular verb. It's either I add D or I add ED or I add IED, depending on the end of the, the last letter of a word. So the last letter of the word tells me when I am to add D or to add ED or to add IED. But it's not so with irregular verbs, reason for which we refer to them as not having a consistent fixed endings. So let's look at them. Now these are irregular verbs, chart on irregular verbs. You can see varying types. Now we have the swim where this present is swim, swam, swarm. Now you see that in this very first example, the present is different, the past is different, and the past participle is also different. But look at the second example. The second example says teach, taught, taught. So in the second example, the past and the past participle are the same. We have obviously gotten two varying ways of forming the irregular verbs. Reason for its name, irregular. That means it's not steady, it keeps changing. Now, number three has the same form for number two, but look at number four. All right, number four has the same form with number, number one, as well as number five has the same form. All right, we want to look at a different one. Perfect. Here is another one, a different form from day two we have earlier mentioned, where you have read, read, read. All right? Read, read, read. All right? It's still the same thing with this one, but it's just the spellings are the same. But remember, the pronunciations are different. Now we have run, run, run. That's a third form, where the present and the past participle are the same. Then finally, you have where the present, the past, and the past participle are the same. Cut, cut, cut. All right. So now, having seen this, let's look at it in its entirety. Now, verbs which do not change their forms. That's the first point. Under irregular verbs, we have those verbs that do not change their form. In the present, bid. The past, bid. In the past participle, bid, right? Cut, I cut my finger yesterday. I had cut my finger the day before yesterday. I had cut my finger. There is no such thing as cutting. The cutting you have is the ing cutting, which is a continuous tense. But using it in its present past or past participle, it remains cut. So likewise, hit, 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 let, let, let put, 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 and we have so many other examples that are classified under this where the present, the past, and the past participle are the same. Then we have verbs which have same in the past and past participle. They are same in the past and the past participle, and these are examples fight, buy, catch, bring, find. So you see that the past and the past participle are basically the same. Fought, 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 bought, bought, caught, caught, brought, brought, find, found. I'm sorry, this should be found. It's a typographical error. It's found, not fought again. Found and found. We already have fight here, which is fought, fought. This is find, so it's found and found. Pardon the error. All right, we also have verbs which are same in their present and past participle. The present and past participle are the same. Basically, just four of them, come and come, the past participle. While the past, simple past is came, we have run, run, we have overcome, overcome, you have outrun and outrun. While the simple past are came, 
ran, overcame, and outran. Then finally, verbs which have different forms. Verbs with different forms. Drive, drove, driven. Break, broke, broken. Ring, rang, wrong. Take, took, taking. See, saw, seen. Then speak, spoke, and spoken. So that's, that's where we have to end this class. That irregular verbs are verbs that have different forms. Regular verbs are those verbs that form their past and their past participle by adding the predefined suffix D or AD. Now let's look at some questions bordering on regular and irregular verbs using our exam guide app. Question number one says, Sunny dash on a banana peel and fell down. Sunny dash on a banana peel and fell down. Sunny slid on a banana peel and fell down. It can be sunny slide on a banana. No, this is in the past. What happened was in the past. So we are going to go for the past form. So it's slide, slid, slid. Slide, slid, slid. So sunny slid on the banana peel and fell down. Let's check. All right, that is it. It says the answer is B. Based on verb tense for regular verbs, the word that best completes the sentence is slid. That's it. That's irregular verb. Because remember we said that regular verbs are those verbs that form their past and their past participle by adding D, ED, or IED. But irregular verbs are those verbs that have varying forms. And you will agree with me that slide is a base form, then the past is slid, and the past participle is also slid. So it falls under that verb form that the past and the past participle are the same. All right, let's take another question. All right. Let's take another one. These ones are theory questions. Okay, let's look at, okay, now we have them at, all right, see this one. The teacher, as well as his students, dash working very hard. This teacher, as well as his students, dash working very hard, is working very hard. But this has to do with Concord. All right, we call it the quasi concord or quasi concord, but that's not part of what we have. You see it, but we're looking at tenses. So, when a singular subject is joined with one, it takes singular verb. All right, let's look for another question that has the regular and the irregular verb. All right, this is said, it's it is said, sorry, it is said that the rich dash pity the poor. The rich don't pity the poor. That's the use of verbs, but we are not looking at that. It's the first question that we took that actually borders on the regular or irregular verb. Let's look at this one. Okay, this should border on irregular verbs or regular verbs. Okay, one of the clever students that's able to solve the problem. You know, you cannot say that someone can use can and able at the same time. So one of the clever students dash able to solve the problem was able to solve the problem. All right, you see it. You don't use can and able at the same time. All right, it's obvious we have little or no questions on irregular and regular verbs. All right, you had better dash your assignment now. You had better do your assignment. All right, you had better dash your assignment now. You had better do it. You, assign, you had better do your ass assignment. Do, did, done. That's our irregular verb do they done so you had better do your assignment now had better do it do best complete 
followed by what? An infinitive verb. verb. What's an infinitive verb? An infinitive verb is a verb with T-O before it. So you had better do your assignment to do. Verb to do. So you had better do your assignment. All right, we will draw the cutting here. I would advise that you look out for activities on our exam guide app, bordering on regular and irregular verbs, and see how far you can go in attempting the questions. Bye.